The chum isn't on the top rung of the salmon species. Nevertheless, thousands of anglers turn out on Washington's streams trying to catch one. And while some are taken home to a barbecue, most are caught and then sent on their way. A uh, chum. They're, they're really popular with fishermen because they're very abundant. The stream like Kennedy Creek here will have 40, 50,000 fish in it at any one time. During the spawning run, they're fairly easy to catch. They're large and they fight very well uh, when you hook them. They're a great sport. The fishery here at Kennedy Creek, for example, has a, a two fish limit. Uh, but most people don't even keep one. Uh, it's a catch and release fishery quite often. If you get a fish that you feel is of good enough quality to take home, to uh, put on a barbecue, uh, smoke, that sort of thing, they may keep a fish. But this is a chum is a fishery that a, a lot of people pursue just to catch the fish, let them go. It's also because the fish are abundant. They're a popular fish for people to learn to catch salmon. It doesn't take a lot of gear, doesn't take a boat, um, and you can get into a lot of fish. You can see a lot of fish and have a you know, good time doing it. And a lot of the runs here in South Sound are close to uh, population centers. You don't have to go far to find them. The, the conventional wisdom is that chum like something green, chartreuse, um, any sort of a green shade, they seem to like that. Uh, fly fishermen use flies with various combinations of green colors on them, uh, green corkies, uh, green yarn on, a, on, your, on your hook. Some people will fish them with a small herring under a bobber. There's a variety of ways people do it. Generally, it's green, uh, seems to be the rule. In my experience, I've only got one pattern that a chum will hit when I'm fishing. For me, somebody else will be using a different fly, and it works just as well. So experiment, but stay in the area of some kind of bright green. One of the favorite fisheries that I participate in is chum fishing because uh, they're a big fish. They're fun to catch uh, on a fly rod. Fish them on a fly rod. They fight real well and the other thing is you can catch them, release them, you can catch a lot of fish. In a, in a good day, uh, fishermen may catch five or ten fish an hour. People enjoy watching fish, especially with the salmon recovery and all that. Um, this is a chance to see salmon to see a lot of salmon and see what they do, very easily accessible. The fishery in a very popular Spokane area lake has been in some need of intensive care. That's what Sprague Lake alongside I-90 got this fall when WDFW crews removed the existing fish population and will start over. Not only will there be better fishing, but it will help the local economy. Well, we see Sprague Lake having a really poor economic return from this fishery. Um, and the, the local residents and merchants here have told us that when the fishery was functioning at, at its peak, there was a lot of economic activity in the little town. Hamburgers sold, gas sold, bait sold, and none of that's occurring now. Uh, when you see oh, a seven or eight fold drop in, in the use of the lake by anglers, the people that notice it the most are the local merchants. This is the largest rehabilitation project that we conduct in the state of Washington. We've done it once in 1985 and now we're going to do it again. And, and uh, we feel like it's a major success to be able to go 23 years between treatments. Um, so we're excited about getting it done this year. And uh, we know we have a lot of work ahead of us, but I think it's going to pay off not only for the state of Washington, but also for all the anglers that are going to come out here and enjoy it. We're working two, four, and five. 
and the, the barges, barges, barges are, are working seven. six and seven where it's the deeper water. Uh -huh. I guess what the issue is for us, it's about use, and, and we have a fishery there that's, that's not being used. There's a limited number of anglers that get out here and use the fishery. Um, historically, we've been as high as 60,000 angler trips in a year on this lake, and currently in 2006, we had less than 9,000. So we've seen a precipitous drop in the use by anglers, um, and we think this project that we're going to implement will get a lot of those anglers to come back and visit Sprig Lake. Another simple index to, to think about and, and why this lake isn't used is here's this great big 2,000-acre lake that's directly along I-90, um, only 35-minute drive uh, to the west of Spokane. And you'd expect quite a number of people to be out here, but on any given day today, the way the fishery is currently, there's no more than two to five boats out here. Two to five boats on a 2,000 acre lake, you lose them. Um, what we'd expect is for somebody to drive by this lake and look out here and see 50 to 150 boats a day. Um, that would tell me as a, as a fisheries manager that we've got fish in here that people want to catch and that people can catch. And today, with the lack of anglers that we have out here, it's fairly apparent that our fishery isn't functioning at a point that's attractive to most anglers. We'll have catchable sized trout, 100,000 catchable sized trout will be planted in mid-April and then roughly three to 400,000 fry plant trout that will be catchable size by spring of 2009. The future fishery and our target goal for this, for this lake is to really grow panfish bluegill, crappie, both black and white crappie, and also yellow perch, along with largemouth bass. So those things will all be replanted next spring. But because we're relying on natural reproduction to get us into those fisheries, we're going to use trout as a, bid, a bridge fishery to get us through the first couple years so that anglers have something to fish for, merchants have something to market, and everybody can come out and use Sprague Lake until our warm water fisheries come back in the way that we expect them to. Here are some fishing opportunities in Washington for the coming week. The staff at our Sherman Creek Fish Hatchery team up with other agencies and local schools to give young students near Lake Roosevelt hands-on lessons about water, fish, and wildlife. It's called Waterfest. So today we're at the 12th annual Lake Roosevelt Water Festival. It's the time where we do educational um, field trips with all the local schools from Spokane up into Canada and all of Stevens, Pend Oreille, and Ferry counties to put on a two-day uh, hands-on educational water festival. And what it entails is about every 30 minutes, the kids switch to a new activity, whether it be learning what animals are dependent on the water from above ground, or what fish utilize the water, or they climb in the creek and, and turn over rocks to see what kind of bugs are there, and that way they can themselves tell whether it's good water quality or bad water quality based on who lives in the stream. Um, we do things on pollution. We teach the kids about how the water table and wells and groundwater affect each other. And pretty much as a water-themed event, we pull in every favor and group around the area 
and some of our major contributors are Avista, um, the Ferry and Stevens County Conservation Districts, um, and a lot of retired teachers and, and educators that uh, put up somewhere between six and eight hundred fourth graders over the two-day event come through the hatchery. Some of the fun, most popular events would be where we put boots on the kids and put them into the creek to find the bugs. And another one would be water safety. Well, the whole theme behind the water festival is that it's hands-on. So the National Park Service sends their rangers over with their uh, patrol boats, and the kids first get a, a educational safety packet on shore, and then they strap on life jackets and go for boat rides. And they practice a water rescue while they're out, and and all this stuff is shoved into a 30 minute time slot so the kids are just moving constantly. Everything's changing, everything's hands-on, touching. Um, the Colville Tribe brings um, a huge display of different hides so the kids get to learn what kind of animals look like what, um, identifying them. They have a section with Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife where it's uh, um, what kind of animals are predators, what kind of prey. Uh, and that goes all the way through from cougar to birdhouses as they leave. So I guess to kind of sum it up, this is our chance um, for once a year to, instead of just give tours all year long, once a year we get to get together and do a hands-on operation for the fourth graders in the area. Um, so I'd, I'd strongly uh, encourage you to, if you want to participate in it, uh, we have a website on the Cobble National Forest under the Lake Roosevelt Water Festival. And this happens every year in the last week of September or the first week of October. We've done it for 12 years now and we'll be continuing on. Here is where you may see some of Washington's wildlife. been wild about Washington brought to you by the employees of the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife working together we can keep Washington's outdoor heritage for future generations thank you for watching